Welcome back to Shadowrun Hong Kong. All right, time to do the final uh, run before the end game starts. So let's go straight to it. Wait, 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 wait. Why can't I? I can't, it won't let me do that run. I've even selected it. Travel to MV Nalchi and steal the data and tissue samples. It just won't allow me to do. Is there a different way I gotta exit or something? I don't I don't wanna go after the plastic man. I wanna do that other job first. Did I not select that mission? Is that what it is? I thought I took that mission. Maybe I'm just a dumbass and I didn't actually accept that mission. Let's, all right. Back to the big Texas. Yeah, see, view, um, directory, view active jobs, data retrieval. Right. So this job is active, but it won't let me go there. So what the... And once I go and get the itinerary, then I can't... I think once I do that, I can't go back. That, that'll be it. It's a kick in the balls. Oh, I forgot not that I could uh, raise these. Wow, okay.
I should have done these long ago. I've been running with unupgraded um, shadow runners. Sweet. Okay. These were all chosen. That's all chosen. I right, guide you. Oh, I have a stun a target. I don't have really much in the way of stunning abilities, though. I usually try to keep Kashi out of melee and in cover, so I'm gonna get ranged attacks. Nice, armor piercing. Like it's not gonna let me do that one last mission. I have to go acquire. Maybe I can do it after I acquire itinerary. I don't know. <sighs> that sucks. I wish I had done that before I talked to Auntie Chang then. Let's, let's put 
Grab it. Let's bring Duncan. Let's bring his. The 18. Isabel has modified the taser to introduce Dreamland's cortical inhibitor program into the plastic faced man's neural network. That should stop his headwear from completing a memory wipe that, and allow you to interrogate him for information about Raymond Black. But first, you need to find him. Kindly Chang's made contact with an underground informant broker named Zhao Ji, who has managed to obtain the plastic faced man's complete itinerary. With it, you can choose the time and place to perform an extraction extraction and find out what he knows. Zhao Zhi works out of an abandoned night market in Shek Kip Mei, the Sheng House Court. I can go this way. This way. You know what we have here? The Emporium. Oh, I know I got what you need. As soon as you walked in that door, I was thinking, I know exactly what this man is looking for. No doubts, no questions. It's you. You are that man. The one with the need. The hunger. Now, what brings you to Zack's fine emporium of exotic potables? Wait, I thought you knew already. You look like the type who wants some jazz. Some kamikaze. Some cram. Real heavy stuff. No, I don't. I'm not in that business anymore. I'm all about the mellow, relaxing the world. It's crazy out there these days. Got any harsh goods right now? Seem like a good customer. Yeah, my buddy dropped this off earlier. I should probably unload it soon. Don't usually carry this kind of thing. Take a look. That's better than my crappy um, shotgun. And it does... Uh... Well, it only has short range. Let's see my shotgun. Same range. It'll be six. Same damage. Less capacity, but it does strip armor. Yeah. Basically, it will cost me nothing to uh, switch these out. Sell my other shotgun. Yeah. 
I don't use the shotgun that much, so having a two capacities doesn't really bother me. Should have is Jack in and take care of it. Probably not a spot to Jack in. The dwarf is the queen of her little hive, an adoring swarm of snitches, stoolies, and spies. Avarice gleams in her eyes. They dart around you, taking in morsels of information so quickly they appear to vibrate. She mumbles little mnemonic rhymes to herself as she tags and labels you all. Ah, yes. The new on the scene runner, Rubik. Hmm, hmm. She rocks in place, humming a soft reply to herself. My friend and he always said you'd be coming to see me. Here for information about the man with the plastic face. Our mutual friend said you had some. Zhao Zi's eyes widen with the joy of her job and she hums her little hum. Very timely, Intel. Very timely. I have this complete up to the minute itinerary. Where he'll be, who he'll be with, security coverage, the deluxe package. You must be very good at your job. Zhao Zi's expression oozes with cunning. You are very kind to say so. Mm, mm, yes, very, very kind. I'm trying to butter her up. Unfortunately, I don't believe we can transact business today. I received another offer. A better offer. Mm, mm, to take it off the market just before you arrived. Yeah, I'm sure. From who? Li Tai Lung's client, I believe you know the company. She fumbles with her fingers a bit. I feel really bad about this, but the offer was too good to pass up. Way too good. Information brokers are a dime a dozen in this town. I'll find another. That's the thing, Rubik, you won't. Sang's big in Hong Kong and getting bigger. She's already on the executive council and she's a front runner to be the next chairperson. No one's going to help you here. Attaching herself, myself to her is smart. Very smart. Mm -hmm. Zhao Zhi fumbles with her fingers a bit more. She can't make eye contact with you. And all I need to do is make sure you don't walk out of here alive. Ambush. 
Well, there's gonna be some shooting people. Oh yes, group up, please group up. Oh, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. All right, let's see. Give him the cover here. Ah, you're blocking my... There. Yes, yes, you guys are going to enjoy this fireball. Oh, I can get all of them. damage but still let's see let's get Gobbit here the cover ah. let's throw aim on Duncan spray and pray. 54%, 63. 63 sounds good. Now let's see. Duncan. Too bad he's not already in cover, but no oh well. on this guy. That'll pretty much kill him. In fact, it'll almost certainly kill him. This guy thug is probably gonna run into yeah, let's do this guy. 83% BAM! That's it for him. Right, let's get Iz in the cover. I'll probably hit uh, Gobbit if I attack him. This guy right here, on the other hand. Oh, oh my goodness! Oh my god, that's some serious damage. Wow, a shock, that would be overkill to use another grenade on him now. So let's just uh, shoot him in the head. Damn, and she criticaled anyway. Ooh, a grenade. And that hurt a little bit. Information broker. The party's just getting started. Alright, let's see. Sixty-nine percent will flame. Give myself better aim too. First, make damn sure I hit, and it will affect others. I think that's the thing to do. Now, that's about a little flamethrower, huh? Huh, Shashi? Oh my god! 45 damage! Oh, that's the good stuff! And the power bolt. And, oh! Not a very good information broker, are you now? You're a dead information broker, is what you are. All right, let's mop up these punks. I'll have Gobbit increase her own aim. And then we'll get aim shot. Let's take this captain. Duncan, introduce this man to some full auto, please. Okay. And 
Let's give him a little bit of a flamey flame type shot. Oh, that's got to hurt me. Ah. Sir, how would you like to experience this here grenade launcher? Well, that was a little bit off, but it did the job, so you know, whatever. Um, let's reload. Hey there, mage. How you doing? Not as good as you were doing before. That is a weak-ass fire spell. I can do a lot better than that. In fact, let me show you. Let me show you how much better my spell was than yours. See? Actually, it wasn't that much better, but it was still better. Strip our armor. There we go. And, uh... Power bolt this bad boy. Go. Let's see, Gobbit. And reload. And that's that. All right. Now ah, let's see what Xiao Xi was carrying. Broker's code. And that code is zero 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 six. Is that the code for this door, or does it go to something in this computer? Let's check this computer first. Xiao Zhi's left her computer unlocked. She plugs her deck into it and scans the screen. She has the plastic man's, uh, plastic faced man's complete itinerary. This will tell us everywhere he's going to be for the next 24 hours. Anything promising? Absolutely. I just need to run some uh, searches on these locations, see if I can get blueprints, photos. She pauses, typing on her deck. First, the bad news. He's got a security detail that drives him from place to place. Six corporate agents, plus the driver. Anytime he's on the move, he's in a reinforced bulletproof limo. He's also got a personal bodyguard that's with him at all times. But there are some windows of opportunity where we can that we can take advantage of. When he's going someplace, they drop him off and leave him in the hands of local security, if any. The bodyguard stays behind, but the other six guards stay with the driver. The detail itself is shared by a few executives, so they will be with someone else until his next pickup time. The convoys are on a schedule managed by the master system at Sang HQ. Okay, I got three good leads here. I think we can run an extraction on any one of these. Number one, the parking garage at Central Plaza. He's there for a meeting in an hour. We can grab him on the way out. It's still secured corporate property, so there will be resistance, but it's the weakest of the corporate properties if he visits. Plus side, there won't be any civilians. Access is limited, and he's listed as a VIP in their system. Not bad. Enclosed space means he can't run. Interesting. Next lead. Next one's a bit personal. Mr. Plastic has a mistress. Visits her twice a week. Today's the day. He'll be at the, at the Fai Yuan Tower building for two hours. It's not corporate property, but it is privately owned. The management company has a security contract on it, so it's likely we'll have to fight. We'll have a fight on our hands, trying to get out of there with him in tow. It'll be less crowded than the parking garage, but the lady might complicate things. Interesting. Who goes for a plastic face guy? And door number three. What's behind it? We have to grab him before he gets home tonight. Once he's home, we're screwed. He's staying in the Sang Executive Arcology, guarded 24-7 by corporate security and two blocks from the HKPFHQ. The final location we could grab him is his last stop for the evening. It's a locally owned public Simpsons Theater, a 
hole in the wall that specializes in underground horror flicks. He's there for an hour and 45 minutes and a security detail will be all the way across town to pick someone else up. We'll probably have to deal with the local police only. But this is a public theater. It's going to be packed with regular people just trying to take in a movie. Yeah, out to the parking garage, no innocents. Okay, the call's made. We go with the middle ground. Let's check this out. Door slides open. Doesn't look like there's a oh, there is stuff in here. Ooh. It's three AP and plus two movement for one round. What the hell? Take it. 387 new yen. Advanced med kit. Pretty good. I'm not gonna complain about that. Is there anything in this mage's apartment now that she's out? Uh, no longer with us. No? Oh well. That sucks it didn't let me do that one last job, but oh well. Not the worst thing in the world. Pretty much uh, high level as it is. I mean, well, I was gonna get it, what, a couple, few more karma, a little bit more money. Unfortunately, I probably won't be able to get that armor. Oh, here we go. Knight errant. They haven't seen me yet, though. It's good. Let's uh, stay in the shadows. So if we can get. I'll be able to hit him from there, but I can try. Alternatively, same same problem if I hide behind the pillar, though. Let's do this. you guys to my friend Fireball. Oof, 95%. This is gonna hurt. This is gonna... Wait, maybe I should strip armor first. Oopsie. This is gonna hurt. Oh, yeah. I got the other guy I can't even see. So I'm good like that. Let's get... Gobbit. That'll use up all her movement points to get her up there. From here she can't hit anyone, and I'll probably get Iz over here. Or maybe I want to get Iz closer. Either way, she's got to use up all her movement points. Let's move here then. I might want to get... I might want to move Iz up. Alright, Duncan. Ah, uh, he can't shoot any of them from there. Alright, well, let's, uh. Screw it, move him out into the open. Is in the cover. 
and listen guys I got a grenade launcher for you how's this oh that's gotta hurt that guy's gonna die just from the fire very soon might as well just get Rubik out in the open so I can get shots on everyone and Hey, let me introduce you to my friend Flamethrower. Uh, oh, come on. Alright, fine, fine. I'm gonna strip your armor just for that. Let's get rid of some armor. And we'll power bolt your ass. This guy's got... Yeah, this guy's gonna be dead next round, I think. So I'm gonna have Duncan concentrate. Well, I'll have these to just take this dumbass out. Load. Switch the pistol. Aim shot. That now Duncan can finish this dumbass off. Line of sight blocked. Fine, fine. Is it blocked now? No. Oh, this mercy shot. Perfect time for him. That takes care of that. Are there gonna be more coming? I should get him in the cover. up here. Let's get Dabit up here. Duncan. Uh, Alright, let's bring him here. Just don't see anyone. Rubik up here. And let's end this round. Well, let's put Gabit on um, Overwatch. In case someone rounds their corner. And Overwatch. And is Overwatch. Oh, nobody. Alright. Let's move Biz out here first. Still don't see anyone. Let's bring her over here. There we go. Let me bring her back here. And I'll lure these dumbasses over here. And we'll... Overwatch. Overwatch. And Overwatch. And let's see if these guys will follow. Come on. No? I guess I have to move out there. Alright. I'm gonna have keep Biz where she is. I don't wanna overwatch this yet. Alright, let's move Rubik here. I don't know much. Let's move Duncan. Oh, they are moving up. That's a grenade here. Yikes, that could be a problem. Let's move him back in the cover. And overwatch. Gob it. Throw aim on Duncan. Overwatch. At least one of them is moving up. 
Isabel. Let's get her back into cover. And Overwatch. You damaged my armor. That's uncool, dude. That is uncool. Right, let me get Rubik back into cover. Oh, but then you can't hit him. Well, nuts. Alright. Let's move him here then. And uh let's strip his armor. Go. Oh, let's see, Duncan. You can hit him. Good. Introduce this guy to some full auto. There we go. And Overwatch. We're moving up. Moving on up. Let me get a little bit over here. Line of sight blocked. He's got 51%, huh? What about if I strip his armor? It's so good now. There's the plastic faced man. And, uh,. It's about a little flamethrower for you. Did you like that? It's, it's good, right? Right? Oh my god, 47! Alright, got it. Let's get her here. Some 40% of that. Get her into cover here. She'll be. Ex she won't be able to act this round. She can't hit this guy. Oh, that is perfect. It's about a little grenade launcher for you. Well, she missed, but messed the plastic face man up, which is just as good. Wow, he's at one hit point. Ouch!
That's his bodyguard. That's going to be the toughest guy to take out. Let's put aim on Duncan. Although he's going to get minus. She's stunned. Still worth it though for Duncan. Alright. For now, well, he does get all his action points. Cool. Let's get him into cover. introduce this dumbass to some full auto. Not doing so well now, are you? Let's get is... I hate bunching them up like that because, uh, you know, grenades. So let's move her here. And, oh man, a grenade right there. So good. So good. Pistol. Shoot him in the face. Oh no! That's right, I can't kill him. I have to kill everybody else. I was hoping I'd be able to, like, mortally wound him. Well, that's a punch in the face. He's doing well, too. a free spirit. I didn't even notice that before. Alright, let's see if I can draw one of them out. Get Duncan back. attack everyone except the plastic faced man. Alright, Duncan. Let's see what if anybody's coming. 
There is. It's a grenadier. Came back here. Actually, let's get him back here. Now, how much is this? This is just one action point. So she can run out here. Cast this. Here, 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 here. Enjoy that grenadier. And run back in the cup. Set Rubik and Overwatch. Set is Overwatch. Oops! Did you just walk through some fire? I bet that didn't feel good. Alright. Rubik come out here. Now let's strip his armor. bit of uh yeah how you like that fire oh that don't feel good let's get the roof let's get uh garbage there face and Duncan load up here and Overwatch. Let's get this over here and Overwatch. I want to wait for this to disappear because I don't want to walk through this myself. That would suck. Maybe I can draw them out with Rubik. I can get this guy. Let's strip his armor. Not a very good toss there, buddy. All right, that's gone. I get four action points this time. All right, first, let's throw some aim on Duncan. Next, move up to here. Throw this guy. And I missed. Alright, Gobbit. Of course. 
nothing else that gives him another target to shoot at. And he got it here. I'm Duncan, get him over there. 84%, that looks good. I could flame bullet him. Ah, oh, nice. This guy's gonna die next round from the flame bullet. Perfect. Let's see, is. Good, good. Shoot at the spirit. Yes. Yes, shoot at the spirit. I thought this guy would die from the flame bullet. Well, he's dead now because uh, I'm gonna have his make damn sure of that. So I had a couple grenades with your names on it. Oh, I hope it doesn't hit Rubik. That did the job. Let's switch the pistol. Faced man and a sniper. I don't really want to throw a fireball there. Well, it won't probably won't kill him. I should probably strip some armor though. Yeah. Have some flamethrower. Oh, that guy's done. Alive. Not for long, though. That. And. Uh, let's see. Let's throw some aim on his. Duncan. What do we have here? Knight Errant Captain. Good. Knight Errant Captain. Meet Full Auto. Full Auto. Knight Care Captain. Okay. Do an aim shot. Let's see. This guy's got four action points. Let's just move them all the way over here. And this sniper here. I don't like you very much, sniper. First, let's see if we can get rid of your armor. We can. Then, let's throw some water in your direction. It missed, but at least it got rid of that armor. That spirit is pretty much gonna be gone. Yep, there it goes. So bunched up right there. Oh, you done goofed. You done goofed. Alright. Seven. That's what I'm talking about. I guess having all that willpower pays off because I have high critical percentages. Alright, well, let's just get rid of this dumbass's armor. Okay. Uh, let's have Duncan. I want to finish this dumbass off. Actually, first. He's still got the aim accuracy raised from before, so no need to do that again. 
That's it for that, dumbass. Now, let's see. Let's hook this guy up with a... Well, he's already on fire. I don't need to flamey flame shot him. You know what? I would love to take out this sniper. Alright, let's see. Let's get Gabe up here. And let's have her heal up Rubik. Rigger's almost dead. Oh, he's coming right up next to her. Oh, that is a bad idea. She's got an SMG. You're about to get blasted in the face, my man. All right, well, that's how you want to be. There you go. That's what happens. Let's move her up. Uh, strip some armor. I think he's already had his armor stripped, actually. Let's improve Gobbit's aim. And let's hook this guy up with a flamethrower. How do you like that? Uh, yeah. I could blind him. Gonna be a very good s sniper when you can't see. Ah. Let's see, it is. Let's get. Let's get her into cover. Now, can Duncan hit this guy from there? No. I need to bring Duncan up to help help out here. I could bring him mm, here. Well, at least he can hit the Enforcer from there. So, let's introduce him to some full, co full auto. Oops! Somebody went nighty night. <laughs> that damn mage sucks. That <laughs> sniper's like, I can't see nothing. Yeah, that's a problem now, isn't it? Alright, I can have Rubik come over here and help out with this mage. Because I'm pretty sure that Gobbit's got this guy covered. And, uh, hey. Aren't you like a little flamethrower? Yeah. Oh, damn. I almost killed him outright. Might as well just have his finish him off. Not with the grenade launcher, though. What's that? And let's get his over here. Now, oh, Duncan. Oh, let's go gob it. Finish out the sniper. That's it, it's just a plastic faced man now. Let's move Gobbit here. Unless there's gonna be more dumbasses appearing. Move Duncan up. Reload. I mean, there's nobody else for me to attack. Do I gotta just hurt him? I don't wanna kill him. Line of sight block. Oh, I can't attack him anyway. Alright. We'll, uh, overwatch. I don't want to 
kill the guy. Oh, I gotta shoot him with the taser. I'm a dumbass. Who has the taser? I think Rubik has a taser. Nobody has a taser. There it is. Oh, it's an item. It's not a weapon. Gotcha. Get in nice and close. So I can't pass. How many uh, actions does it cost to use? Just one. Okay. Get in nice and close. And, uh. Yeah. So now I just gotta survive three rounds. Cover. Get Duncan behind this pillar. Uh, yeah. Ow. That was uncool. Cover. Heal myself. God, let's find where she is. Duncan back here. Get his over here. And around. That's good. You just run around and do nothing. I like that. Rubik back here. Get Duncan back here. Is over here and we wait and nighty night. The coast is clear. It's time to move the plastic faced man to a secure location and get to the bottom of this. Your crew will meet you there. The crew is silent as you lead your captives to the rooftop rendezvous you designated before the run. Just as you plan, you find the others waiting there for you. Li Tai Lung's artificial features are molded into an expression of aloof intellect and mocking rigidity. The plastic that makes up his face is soft, flexing with the motion of his underlying musculature. Overlapping wafers of silver and bronze foil buried inside the material catch the light as he moves. It's the work of a master craftsman. Cyberware is a form of modern art, likely commissioned at modern art prices. An ostentatious display of status and wealth. The plastic-faced man examines the zip ties that bind his wrists with an expression of detached amusement. Isabel runs a long cable from her PDA to the jack in the back of his head and nods at you. Well, this is interesting, I must say. He chuckles, an odd hollow sound. I don't recall ever having been in this situation before. Usually I simply awaken to find myself in a strange new environment, wondering what happened. I guess there's a first time for everything, huh? He surveys your crew with detached indifference. Looking at the lot of you, I think it's safe to assume that a violent extraction of information is the next order of business. Oh, you can bank on that, asshole. Wu focuses his attention on the plastic-faced man's kneecaps. So, you chose to take me in an empty parking garage, surrounded by corporate security, he considers. Low chance for civilian casualties. Clearly, the safety of innocence is a priority for you. Rubik, we have a problem, Isabel stares down at her PDA. Dreamland's neural inhibitor software isn't interacting with this guy's cortical implant the same way it worked with her own. 
It's only going to slow the memory wipe process. How long do I have? I don't know. We're talking about software I didn't write interacting with two different pieces of hardware I've never seen before. We're lucky this works at all. She begins a flurry of two-handed thumb taps on her PDA. I'll try and key in some buffering routines or something to slow it as much as I can, but my confidence is low. Isabel shakes her head at the PDA, her face pinched in frustration. This guy's memory's going to get wiped one way or another. I'd start asking questions, Rubik. Tense. Very tense. The silky plastic of his face slides into a smooth smile. I guess I'll answer your questions. Rather... Slowly. I wonder what's under that mask of yours. I was just wondering the same thing. Gosh's servos were as if in anticipation. Don't bother looking. Neither of us will enjoy it, I guarantee. Besides, I was joking. We don't need to step through a process. My clients know I'm a professional and that I take extraordinary precautions to protect their secrets. If those precautions were compromised, it was due to an extreme circumstance. His chin lifts a bit and his tone becomes even more matter-of-fact. You ask your questions, Rubik. I'll answer them as efficiently as I can. When we're done, I'll shake hands with a stranger and walk away wondering what just happened. What is prosperity? Prosperity Tower is Sang Medical Engineers Engineering's corporate headquarters. Prosperity is also one of Josephine Sang's projects. Which one do you want to know about first? His voice gets a sing-song tone. Tick-tock. I want to know about the Prosperity Project. Well, that's going to be challenging. You see, the Prosperity Project is Joe Sang's best-kept secret. And the best way to keep secrets is to not tell anyone, even someone whose memory can be wiped. All I know is that Prosperity is something built deep inside the Kowloon Walled City, some kind of experiment that her son was working on. Edward Sang. No, wait. Raymond Black, my father. Who stands up tall, takes his takes that amused tone he gets when someone is about to get hurt. Hey, Mr. Plastic, maybe you could settle a bet between me and my brother. Who puts his face close to Lee's, his breathing fogging the white plastic? Now, I think Raymond is still alive, but my brother here isn't so sure. Whose voice drops to a stage whisper? Which is it, buddy? Raymond Black, dead or alive? I got 20 new yen on this. Guys, a status bar just popped up. It isn't moving yet, but you never know when it might take a jump. The little decker watches their screen for a moment. It's stuck at zero right now, but the process is starting, and there's nothing I can do to stop it. Here, give me that. Lee reaches out a perfectly manicured hand to Isabel. I'll show you something. Isabel pulls away on instinct that looks at you. This is a calculated gamble. You're running out of time and holding all the guns. I have information you want and betting that if I share it with you, you won't kill me when this is over. Hmm. All right, I'll trust him. Plastic Man takes the PDA from Isabel and stares down at the screen. His eyes become unfocused and he stands like a statue. A low-resolution video recording pops onto the screen. A small weathered man, possibly in his 70s, is strapped into a high-tech chair and connected to an elaborate scientific instrument behind him. The recording is from the first-person perspective, presumably the plastic-faced man's. This is from when I first brought the asset, your father, to Prosperity Tower. His eyes remain unfocused, still as a statue, after I took him from the tea house on the docks. The video continues and a confident voice can be heard from off screen, a woman's. You can't make out what she says. The point of view turns to the right and a graceful woman of indeterminate age steps into view. She's clearly advanced in years, but access to a nourishing diet and cutting edge pharmaceuticals afford her the vitality of someone much younger. She speaks directly to the camera. Her tone is hard. I warned you to be gentle with him, Mr. Lee. She looks over at the old man with genuine concern. He looks as if someone tased him. The voice of the plastic faced man replies, I assure you, Mrs. Sang, I was gentle. He walked out of the tea house under his own power. The old man speaks, his voice weary and hoarse. May I have some water, mother? My throat feels like it's on fire. 
She responds tenderly. Yes, of course, Edward. I'll have someone bring you some ice chips. The plastic faced man speaks again, his voice lowered. Your son has apparently been through some sort of ordeal. He appeared demented at times, and he's been mumbling about stopping something. Prosperity, I think. Yes, well, that won't be happening. The woman addresses her son, speaking a bit too loudly, as if he is hard of hearing. We won't be stopping prosperity, Edward. I want you to get that out of your mind. Do you understand? I understand perfectly well, Mother. There is no need to shout. But I won't give up. Prosperity must be stopped. All those poor people. The woman frowns and shakes her head. I know, Edward. I know. Those poor people. I've done a lot of good to make up for it since you left. Shelters, hospitals, all sorts of good work. Now it's time to do something for you. Something I should have done a long time ago, perhaps. From the left side of the screen, a man enters in a white lab coat. The woman looks up and nods, and the lab coat man places a chrome apparatus on the old man's head. Raymond speaks dreamily, as if a drug has started its work. What is this, Mama? What are you doing to me? I'm fixing you, Edward. Is she wiping his memory here? She walks up close to the old man, strokes his head tenderly, and leans forward to kiss it. All you can see is failure. You're incapable of seeing the good in what you've done. The man in the white lab coat presses a button on Raymond's chair and a robotic arm swings into view. Cobalt blue light springs from its tip and the arm quickly circumnavigates the old man's head, bathing it in oscillating blue. A high definition three dimensional image of Raymond's brain appears on the wall behind. I've been inspired by Mr. Lee here. The woman turns and looks at the camera. We're going to do some editing of your memories to relieve you of your burden. Raymond mumbles dreamily, desperately fighting to get the words out. No, Mom, wait. I figured out what to do. And then he is asleep. The woman moves closer to the camera. Your payment will be made according to your agreement. She turns away, her voice cold. Once the rest of them are dead. The video ends and the plastic-faced man exhales slowly. I've taken a big risk showing you that. I don't give a rat's ass who turns to you. You see? I knew it. I told you, Rubik. Raymond's alive. Sank's holding him at Prosperity Tower. He may be alive, but it looks like his mom's going to erase part of his memory. Just like Johnny Plastic here. She's going to try to fix him. What kind of mother would do that? Something catches her eye and she looks down suddenly. Shit, shit, shit! Isabel thumbs her PDA furiously, but it's no use. That's it. He's wiping. She pulls the cable from her PDA and drops it to the ground in aggravation. Oh, hello. The plastic-faced man looks down at his zip-tied hands and then slowly surveys the surroundings. Well, isn't this awkward? What do you want to do with this guy? He's got no memory, so it's probably safe to let him go. But Auntie said we should he should take a dirt nap. Who raises his rifle? All the same to me. You don't cross Auntie Chang. What Auntie wants, Auntie gets. But he gave us everything we asked for and more. He's seen our faces. But I have nothing to connect them with. It's all the same with you. I'd prefer to just walk away. No loose ends. End the gun show. Sorry, you don't cross the... You don't cross Auntie Chang. That just... That was gonna come back and backfire on me, I think. She would have found out. I feel kind of bad because he cooperated, but you don't cross Auntie Chang. You just don't. Revelations. The trip from Shek Kip May back to Hiyue is quiet as you process the information revealed by the plastic-faced man. Prosperity is a name. Two names, actually. One is the secret project Raymond was working on before he left for Seattle. The other is the corporate headquarters of Sang Medical Services. And Prosperity Towers, where Raymond Black is being held. Alive. It's also where his memory is in the process of being reprogrammed by his mother. And time is ticking. The plastic-faced man proved surprisingly amenable and quite useful. Before you kill him. Your next stop is Kindly Chang. She'll want to hear this. Give me karma. Give me the karma. Ten karma. Nice. 
You step out of the MTR station and into the balmy night air. An impenetrable wall of clouds, heavy with imminent rain, has blown in from the south. It covers the stars, causes them to wink out one by one. You can smell something on the air, something electric. The wind whips up around you and the clouds begin moving in a thick grayscale swirl. The spiral builds and grows, shimmering with faint amber light. As you watch the clouds roll in the sky, the sound of the city's retreat. A bubble of soft white noise replaces them, wrapping around your head and reflecting your own heartbeat back on you. You look down from the clouds and see lights of the docks, docks dancing in warm, saturated bloom. You raise your wrist to capture the view with your PDA's built-in camera. The image swims into focus on the machinery's tiny screen and the camera's lens adjusts to the light. And that's when the first twinge tickles your chest, lets you know something is coming. A moment later you feel an incredible tightness in your chest. It feels like your heart is being crushed under the foot of a giant. Your vision goes gray and your sense of balance disappears. Gradually, blood rushes in to refill the organ, inflating it like a balloon. Good thing I have high willpower. You calm yourself, breathe, gradually. Your heart rate normalizes and the world swims back into focus. Something is still very definitely wrong, but you're able to face it with a clear head and a steady heartbeat. You place one foot in front of the other, determined to face whatever this is and overcome it. A tingling sensation washes, o washes over you, suffusing you to the core. You stumble forward and every cell in your body seems to vibrate. The energy thrums inside of you, pulsating, building to an unbearable crescendo, and then you're on the other side of it. You find yourself standing in a familiar courtyard, the walled city. You're back in the walled city just like in your dreams. You can taste the stench of the place, the mildew and plaster and wet dark stink of the slum. No, this isn't real. You squeeze your eyes shut and shake your head, willing the images to disappear willing yourself back to Hioi and out of the decaying slum that you found yourself in. When your eyes open, nothing has changed. The crumbling faca facades of tenement building lean, in one, lean into one another above you, closing in on either side and creating a narrow walkway. Just like in your dreams, there's nowhere else to go, nowhere but forward, down the path ahead. You let your legs carry you forward. You feel a creeping sense of certainty in the back of your mind and it tells you that you've taken this same walk hundreds of times before. The sense of claustrophobia mounts and builds with every step you take. It feels like you're worming your way forward down a long dark tunnel. The humidity of the place sticks to, to your skin. As you proceed deeper into the walled city, a low rumble fills the air. The noise, is enorm uh, the noise of enormous gears in motion. You feel hollow, empty, and with every step you take, you can feel that emptiness growing. An unbearable yearning unlike any hunger you've ever known. Let's keep going. You continue walking, just as you always have, just as you were meant to. Off in the distance, an alien silhouette beckons to you. It's her, the tall, slender thing from your dreams. The elusive figure that you've always been moving toward, but could never quite reach. A crowd of locals lines the path ahead, kneeling in supplication. They look emaciated, all skin and bones, clothed head to toe in dirty rags. Ignore them and keep moving. You brush past the kneeling figure and continue forward. As you do, a mounting sense of correctness builds in your chest. These people are beneath notice. They should be ignored. Your feet carry you past them and soon enough they fade from view. Your legs carry you deeper and deeper into the beating heart of the tenement. If you haven't reached the center yet, you must be close. It's incredibly hot and humid in here. The sweat rolls down your body in sheets. Your thoughts go hazy with the heat, and a dim sense of unease takes root in the pit of your stomach. Let's focus on them. You try to concentrate on the unease that you're feeling, but you find it impossible to focus. The omnipresent sound of grinding gears isn't helping. Looking up, you can see where the noise is coming from. A hatch. The same door that you saw in your nightmare back when all of this began. The markings on the door are legible now. A single word is fit is in faded yellow paint. Prosperity. Suddenly, impossibly, the alien figure that you've been moving toward is standing right in front of you. At the same time, your vision finally clears and ice water runs through your veins. The walled city isn't a slum at all. 
It's an enormous gaping maw, and the buildings are a forest of crooked teeth. The thing reaches for you. With inhuman speed and grace, it plunges fingers of polished ivory into your mouth. Slowly, terribly, it begins to wretch your jaw open. You can feel your teeth splinter and break in. Rough fingers on your shoulders snap you back to reality. The hand clenches you like a vice -like, with a, in a vice-like grip and yanks you backward onto your feet, off of your feet. You come crashing to the floor of the Hioi MTR station. You can feel a rush of wind just in front of you, a passing train. What is wrong with you, Rubik? Strangler Bao eyes you coolly. Auntie Cheng's lost too many runners already. Besides, there are cleaner ways to end your life than jumping in front of a train. I was just in the walled city. There was this thing. He cuts you off with a grunt. You were hallucinating and you almost got yourself killed. Now get up and get back to that floating wreck that you sleep in. You don't get to die in here unless Mrs. Chang says you do. More karma. Sweet. Alright, cool. We're gonna leave off here. Gonna have a talk with Auntie Chang. Spend some willpower. Maybe hopefully get some money and buy some new gear. And then head toward the finishing line, I guess.